Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. On this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answers they need, but not today. Today we're talking about a specific statute that has been uh, widely reported about in an inaccurate fashion, at least so far as I have seen. Uh, real quick, I'll note I'm in uh, the, new, the new office in New York. Uh, I love it. I love it. It's fantastic. Um, it's got some great views, and I think that'll be really nice at night. Let me see if I can move this for you. You get a kind of a, a feel. It's, you know, it's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's, it's nice. It's nice. Um, all right. We got to talk about the rape is rape bill. Fantastic law. One of the best laws. Love everything it does. I have nothing nasty to say about the law. I have nothing nasty to say about the people who drafted the law. I think it's great. Can't be clear enough. I think the rape is rape bill does good and meaningful things. And I'm not aware of any negative tied to that bill whatsoever. However, whatsoever, however, um, there have been some influencers and a couple of journalists who have put out headlines and articles claiming that the rape is rape bill makes all workplace sexual harassment become the criminal offense of rape. That is patently false. I don't think you should hate those influencers. I think they read articles that were inaccurate that may have now been repudiated or taken down. Um, but I've been seeing this for a couple of days and when I first saw it, I was like, that seems amazing for plaintiff side employment attorneys, if it's true. But it did strike me as something that probably couldn't be true, right? <clears throat> so like forcible touching could be, you know, somebody walking up to you in the, in the workplace and like, touchy, 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 and like poking you in the forehead, right? Like that could... I mean, I don't know. I don't know the, the elements of the criminal offense of forcible touching, but you know, is the, is poking you in the forehead sexual harassment? It's unwanted touch, so maybe, but it's it's probably not groping. It's probably it's it's certainly not rape, right? It's rude, it's obnoxious. It's a good reason to terminate someone, um, but it's probably not rape as we understand the word rape in our society, and it's probably not rape as the criminal justice system defines rape. We can probably agree on that. Should, should it carry a 30-year penalty? I mean, that person poking in the forehead is pretty annoying. I, I don't know. But I think we can probably agree <coughs> that rape is more egregious, more horrific than the, than the forehead poker, and or, or the creepy, I'm going to give you a back rub guy in the workplace, like those forehead poker and the back rub guy, those are bad guys. They're doing bad things. But they're not committing the criminal offense of rape, right? So I went ahead and took a look at the law. And I was pretty sure in my reading of the law that what those journalists and influencers were saying was simply objectively false. There was nothing in the law whatsoever that reflected what they were saying. And I think that's why some of those articles are already down, as they should be, right? Journalists should be uh, responsive when they make mistakes. They should probably print retractions instead of just taking articles down. <coughs> but listen, it's not like I turned to journalism school. I, I don't know the proper what for of how this stuff gets done. But my reading of the law as a civil attorney, attorney who works with civil laws, it was imperfect because I'm not a criminal attorney. It's not what I do. It's not my expertise. So I reached out to a friend of the channel, criminal attorney Michael Lambert. We've had him on a couple of times. Uh, he is criminal attorney to the stars. He's represented such big names as El Chapo, right? Um, and listen, if you're a criminal attorney, hard to do something more meaningful than that, right? Hard to, hard to be a more meaningful criminal, allegedly. 
or maybe now convictedly. Um, and Michael kind of, sorry, somebody just messaged me about chickens. Um, he's pretty busy right now. So what he did rather than come on the channel was give me a prepared statement, which he wanted me to read, attributing to him. And I will do that now. Okay, now this is now Michael Lambert. Attorney Michael Lambert. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that legislation, the Rape is Rape Bill, is kind of uneventful. It just consolidates all forms of penetration and defines them as rape. Pause. This video is definitely getting demonetized. Unpaused. So forced oral or anal penetration used to have a slightly lesser penalty than rape under the New York penal law, which only applied to vaginal penetration. So it does not turn every type of sexual assault, such as forcible touching, <coughs> into rape or anything radical like that. It was also designed to properly address and punish rape between two men, which previously was handled under an outdated sodomy statute, which is very disrespectful, and constituted a slightly lesser offense than rape itself. Hor horrible that that, that that was the case, and I'm glad we fixed that. But Michael goes on. Beyond that, it's nothing too dramatic. It basically cleans up and simplifies some unnecessarily fractured <coughs> and complicated statutes regarding forced penetrative sex. I don't think this really changes anything fundamental about the law. If you fondle or grab someone, that's still a lesser offense than rape. Any form of forced penetrative sex is now rape. Full stop. Yeah. That is from an expert, a subject matter expert. And I think um, it's important to get that out there. It's weird that I'm delivering the statement of a subject matter expert, but it was the only way to get it up right now. And I think it's important to get it up right now because there, there does appear to be some active misinformation in the, the blogosphere and in the influencer zeitgeist right now. And as much as I'm all for st stiff penalties, for forcible touching, I do think we have to acknowledge it's not rape. And it there is some value in having a um, a varied set of penalties <coughs> for a varied set of criminal offenses, right? There, there, there has to be some reflection that uh, different offenses are of different levels of seriousness and um, different people who have committed different offenses might be more readily rehabilitated than others who have done more horrific things that some sometimes there's certain people who do things so horrific you're like I don't I don't know if that person can be re rehabilitated I don't know if that can happen and I don't know that we as a society think that's true for a, a forcible toucher, so to speak. But in any case, <coughs> I wanted to get this out there. I think it's really important to get it out there. I hope you're all well. I'm going to shoot a collaboration with Eric Sarver tomorrow, I believe. I would love to hear all of your comments and thoughts about the Rape is Rape bill. I think it does a lot of good things. Love the law. I just wanted to correct the uh, misinformation. And... Uh, like, subscribe, comment down below, share the channel so it can grow. Take care.